Have you heard? There's a guy named uh, Peter Nygaard. You know who this is? Don't know. He's a Canadian billionaire who's, I believe, in prison right now uh, for all types of, you know, trafficking type type charges and so forth. So I did an interview with Chris Hansen, who did a lot of research about him and so forth. And essentially, by the time Peter Nygaard got locked up, and he's, you know, in his 80s, I believe, at that point, what he was doing was he was using stem cells to keep himself younger. And what he would do is he would have girlfriends who he would impregnate and then have abortions. Then he would take the abortion matter. And since stem cells from your DNA are much more, you know, compatible than stem cells from other people, he would then take these stem cells from these abortions and somehow inject them and made himself more vibrant. And they said that when he got locked up after six months, he started to like fall apart. Do you know about this? No. Okay. Does it sound plausible? Well, of the many ways we are attempting to prolong life, uh, one of them is deep into stem cell research. From what I, I'm not an expert here in this space, but what I remember is the whole conversation about uh, aborted fetuses um, changed because we were able to produce stem cells from your own cells. Somebody developed a method to do that. So that whole conversation about what do you do with abortions went away. I don't think you've seen it in the news recently. I haven't for sure. Yeah. So I think there were some advances that enabled this from, from your own cells. Whatever is the pathway to prolonging life, um, I think that will happen before we, we sever your brain from your brainstem and keep it alive. Mm. The, you have to be careful though if you want to live forever. For me, knowing I'm going to die gives meaning to what it is to be alive. If I know I'm going to die, I got this much time left. No, this much time. I, I got it. I better get busy. I be, better get this done. I, I don't know. I've got to get it done now and be as good at it as I can possibly be. It brings focus to life. So mathematically, if knowing you're going to die brings meaning to your life, then the prospect of living forever means you will have a life of no meaning at all. Mathematically speaking. Well, you could say that, but you could also say that... Well, it's mathematically true. The life be socially expectancy, true. Well, the life expectancy in 2023 compared to, let's say, 500 years ago was what? Probably four times. You know, people back then were dying in their 30s. No, no. So, yeah. So, interestingly, the, our life expectancy had not changed much from caveman up to the early 1800s. Okay. It was in, That's why in I the said 30s. 500 years ago. You wouldn't yeah. have to go far, that far back is okay. my point. Okay. You go 200 but, years back. Yeah, 200 years. Yeah. Totally. 200 years back. So most of these advances are in the last 150 years. Exactly. Introduction of sanitation, ch um, uh, prenatal child care. Refrigeration. Uh, uh, yeah. All of this. All of that. Factors in. Penicillin. Yeah. Goes on and on. It reminds me of a comic. There are two cavemen sitting around a fire and one of them says to the other, you know, our water runs clean. Our, our, our air is pure. Our animals are free range, yet we're still dying in our 30s. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought, what do we do wrong? <laughs> this is a complete advertisement for science, right? right? Um, so, uh, so let me just say that we know intuitively that if you're going to die, there's meaning there because you would not bring a bouquet of plastic flowers to a loved one. They would, they would, they would not think much of that gift. Well, why? if the plastic flowers will live forever. <laughs> Isn't that a better gift than ones that'll die six days later? Yeah. But what happens, you give the flowers that, that you, you gift living flowers, and then the person receives them. Now they have to take care of them. They gotta find a vase, put it in the vase, do some trimming. Over the days, they, the petals open up in response to light from the window. There's a fragrance that comes from them. They get nurtured, you replace the water. Six days later, seven days later, the, the stem of the flower weakens as they enter their period of senescence. And the bulb can no longer be held upright. And then they get discarded. The fact that those flowers were going to die meant it, it captured the attention of the person tending to them. Mm. 
the, the re, it created a relationship between the person and the flower that had meaning. If you were gifted plastic flowers, you would have no relationship with them at all. It would become visual wallpaper in your home. So I submit to you that things that die bring this upon us culturally, emotionally, psychologically, the valuation of who and what they are in our short time on earth. Yeah, that's cool. I still want to live forever, but you know. Well, if everyone lived forever, <laughs> we would need another planet. We would need another planet. Okay. Exactly. Sorry. I just put that out. Start terraforming Mars before you, okay. you accomplish And we'll get this. to that. 